Do you feel like you need a little more direction in your life? Perhaps you need some sort of guidance GPS system. Well, I have the solution for you, and that is your very own personal vision statement. And if you stay tuned to the end of this video, I'm going to share with you a really cool technique on how you can remain grounded in very difficult times. Hi, if you're new here, welcome. I'm coming to you from a new location, my home. So for the best career and project management advice, click that uh, subscribe button, hit that uh, bell so you can be notified of a new video every Wednesday. So welcome to this two-part series of creating your own personal vision statement, really step-by-step -step detail instructions, like I'm here with you, pretend that I'm right beside you as we're going through this. This is part two. This is the actual, the nitty-gritty, us getting into drafting your vision statement. So let's get to it. All right, personal vision statement part two. We're gonna take a look at the last three steps of creating your own personal vision statements. So step number four is personal vision statement preparation. Step five is drafting your vision statement. And last but not, last but not least, the really fun part, creating your visual vision statement. So let's get to it. So step four, personal vision statement preparation. We've already done a lot of the heavy inward lifting uh, work that we needed to do in part one, which was all the inward reflection. We're gonna start using this information in the creation of our personal vision statement. So vision 101, let's first figure out and make sure we're all on the same page. What is a vision statement? It is the what we aim to achieve, a depiction of a desired result that motivates, energize, and helps describe a desired destination. What do you see yourself doing 10 years from now? That's what a vision is all about. And a good example that I use all the time that people resonate is JFK. He had a vision to land a man on the moon by the end of the decade and return him safely back. That was definitely motivating and energizing and really that 10 year aim, what did they see? So even though they were nowhere near close, it was a vision statement that was to motivate. The bar was high and that's what we're gonna do here. So why do you need a vision statement? Well, think of it as that it guides your life. It's like your Google Maps in life. It's your beacon in the night. It's going to allow you to do the things that are really gonna resonate with you. So it provides a direction necessary to steer your course each day and enable you to make personal and professional choices. It is an amazing tool, and this is what I love about vision statements to allow you to say yes or no to your chosen path and it is to guide you to your authentic self so there's very specific things a good vision statement will have it will be a means by which you describe a desired outcome that invokes a vivid mental picture of your goal it inspires and energizes you it's uh, be what you return to whenever you get confused about your professional or personal goals. And this is a really important one because we can get sucked into uh, the white noise of life and we can get sucked into wanting to have someone else's dreams and desires, but it is meant to guide you back to what really is truly important to you and your authentic self. And last but not least, it's going to tell you where to go, just like a map, Google map, right? We want to know where to go and it's going to guide you in your life. How cool is that? So the vision embodies people's highest values and aspirations. It inspires people to reach for what could be and to rise above their fears and preoccupations with current reality. So this is where you want to now. Uh, pause the video in a moment, but we're going to do a really good reflection. We're going to visit everything that we've done in part one. So we want to take a yellow highlighter or a blue highlighter, whatever color you have. Just have like two that are two very specific colors and make sure you know what you're assigning. So one highlighter color is going to be for the things that you love and the other ones are for things that you want to change. Again, you're doing an analysis on yourself. So as time has passed and these reflection exercises are occurring, you're now really figuring out what's truly important to you and as time progresses, is it still important to you? So keep all of this in mind for the next exercise. So pause this video right now, take a look at all the stuff that you did in part one and really pull out the things you're connecting with still and those that you really would like to change. Okay, 
dare to dream. I love this. So this is where we get to break things down. You just did a full analysis. You've highlighted things. Now you get to dream. You're going to pick categories that resonate with you and you're going to write down your future dreams in point form. So for some people, they may want all of this stuff. This is here strictly for a guideline. So you may have some very specific financial dreams or physical dreams in regards to your physical fitness, family, spiritual, work career, mental, intellectual, fun, social relationships, others. Again, here is your opportunity to go, what category do I like? I usually call this the bucket phase. So we want to bucket things. Now, don't forget to reflect on the past exercises. So stop this video, take a look at your past stuff, pick your categories, and based on the data that you had from part one, go start in point form. What is it that you want from each category that you've chosen? Okay, now that you've done that, this is where we're cleaning things up as we go. They're all building blocks. This process of cleaning things up, not just having the perfect version uh, for the first time, it's actually a building off of each one because it's going to just make things even more um, specific, which is what you want. So now that you've done everything in point form in the previous exercise, so let's take a look at this. All of this was all point form. You now want to take those categories that you picked. And again, this is with your pen and your paper. Take those categories and you can have as many as you like. So put your category and now write the statement. You put everything in bullet points, but now write it so it's a story. So in two to four sentences, and you can have as many categories as you like. So stop this video, create your summary statement for the categories that you've chosen. All right, good old reflection time. You're going to read your summary statements daily for the next couple of weeks. Tweak them if needed, and just make sure that they still resonate with you. Take notes on the days you reflect on your statements. How do you feel? And write it all down. So again, get your paper and pen out and do all this. So stop this video, put it on hold, reflect understand is it still connecting with you is there anything that you want to change sometimes a simple word is what needs to be changed a technique i use is i actually record everything and i close my eyes as i am listening to it because you'll be amazed when you listen to it you hear things that you would not have seen quote unquote by reading it All right, think of your vision statement as your Google Maps for life. It will guide you to make the right decisions. Hey, that's me. All right, let's talk about step five. So now that you understand and preparing your vision statement, we're going to be drafting the vision statement because making dreams a reality, it is time to write it. And how cool is that? So you're going to take a look at your values. You're going to take a look at your category summary statements. Read them all out loud. What words or sentences popped out? Write them down here. And now we're going to start writing our vision statement. So just a few reminders. You want to write everything in the present tense. So describe what you feel, hear, think, and say and do as if you reached your vision now. There's very good reason for this, okay? If you're constantly thinking about the future, only things are going to happen in the future. But if you take something that you really desire and want and you put in the present tense, there's more of a reality to it. So I really want you to start thinking in that mindset. Describe the best outcome you can achieve. Really important to use simple language. Evoke the emotion and make it obvious and unashamedly passionate. Build a picture in your mind like a story. Have a beginning, middle, and an end. And write five to ten sentences. So stop this video. Get your piece of paper and your pen and really take a look at everything that you've created to date and start creating your vision statement. Again, five to 10 sentences. We can always pare things down accordingly when we're ready, but I really want you to take this time and just write things down. Okay, so now that you've done that, you've written your first draft, it is reflection time. So remember how I said earlier on about recording yourself? It's really important to start recording yourself with your vision statement draft. So record yourself reading your second dra your draft of the vision statement. Relax, close your eyes, replay the statement back again. What feels right? What needs to change? Tweak and finalize your statement. So the goal here now is you want to use your other senses to really connect with 
the vision statement drafts that you've been creating. So we've already created one before, we're now cleaning it up and we're ensuring that we're reflecting on it and it still resonates with us. Okay, once you've done all that reflection, you're gonna have your final vision statement, write it here. So take everything that you've tweaked, erased, switched, changed, whatever it may be, and put it now right here. Stop this video and take a look and give yourself that moment to finalize your vision statement. Because if your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. And that's exactly what your vision statement should be. You should be totally excited, but slightly nervous because you know you're not gonna achieve it today, but it's pretty darn exciting because it is about the future and you are putting it down on paper to make it a reality. All right, let's now go to the final step, step six. This is creating your visual vision statement. A picture is worth a thousand words. I said this in part one, uh, and I'm gonna say it here again. I do have a TED talk which talks about listening to your whisper. So if you went to um, TEDx slash Adriana Girdler, you'll see it there. And I really talk about the importance of having a vision statement. So this is, that could be another uh, reference for you. So, but it is so critical about pictures and a lot of times, and the reason why I even came up with this idea is because I had my written vision statement, but I was glossing over it and it was just becoming a bunch of words. And it was only until I transformed mine into pictures, did it really become even more powerful than it ever was before. And something that I use every day as a tool because your vision statement and values have been created. You are clear with what you want, you have your vision, and how you will be guided your values to get there. Inspiration is what motivates everyone, and this is why we wanna turn things into pictures. Because you're clear, you wanna know how you're gonna do it, you just need like a map in life to help you get there. So seeing your vision daily embeds what you want and it beds all, sorry, all of what you want, your wants and desires in your mind's eye, reminding you what you're trying to achieve. It keeps you on your path, heading you towards your heart's desires, because it is so easy in today's day and age to be lost in the white noise, to get so caught up in the bings and the dings and, you know, getting the likes and social media. And I'm just going to watch one more YouTube video. Yeah, I know, I know. I got a YouTube channel. I get it. I get it. But it's true, we can get so lost into it and time passes and we're like, what did I accomplish? But not with a visual vision. You can get yourself back on track and this is why I'm sharing this with you. Because a visual vision statement will represent your words and feeling. It may be direct where a picture equates to a specific word or it could be used as a metaphor where a picture equates to feeling and concepts. But here is the key. The beauty of a visual vision statement is that it only needs to be meaningful to you. So who cares what other people think? It's only about you and what you think. And so it's you taking the words that you created in step five and putting pictures and words and feelings in it so when you see it, you fully resonate with it. Because by creating this visual representation, you'll be able to look and see your vision and instantly be reminded of what's truly important, allowing you to start saying yes to opportunities that are going to get you to your vision statement goals. Okay, I have some examples for you. Normally, I don't like to share examples uh, because I think sometimes people just focus on that and they recreate it. But there is something to be said about understanding it. So I got three specific ones for you. So one is from this individual, and for her, um, again, this is important to everyone, but she was able to kind of do as a imagery uh, with books uh, and very specific things that she wanted to kind of pull out here from a value perspective. She's actually a writer, and one of her goals is to write books and really do this as a full-time living gig. Second one is for another individual that was a little more compartmentalized, if I can say that correctly. And they were really about, okay, what do they want to do? They want to follow their heart's desires, live in the moment. And then each symbol here represented something very specific for them. And last but not least, we have this other individual who, you know, really created the words of their vision and then created an overall imagery like a painting experiencing or really acknowledging what it is that was important to them. 
it does not matter what you do. If you go to my website, you would see, I have a graphic design one. I chose not to show this to you, um, my graphic design one, because I don't want you to get, think, oh, why is it look so nice? And, and it does look really nice, but this is about you creating what's important to you. If it's really important that you want to get it, give it to graphic design. There's so many things like Canva and stuff that you now can take whatever you draw and you can make it into something really cool. So let's get started, yay. Get your pencil out, get your paper out. Look at everything you've created and start really pulling on your imaginations of the things that are really important to you and create your visual vision statement. So stop this video and start getting to your drawing. All right, gotta love this reflection. Once you've drawn, fantastic, good for you. You wanna take a look at it for a few days. Does it still feel right to you? Do you wanna change anything? So here are your instructions. You wanna redraw the final version if there's anything that you wanna change. You wanna be able to see it, be embedded into your subconscious that it really resonates with you. And use color as well. That's something really important too. So stop this video and just really reflect and see is this everything that you've created, is it everything that you want represented? Are colors the right colors, the right imagery? This is your time to make the change. Okay, now that you have all the steps you need in order to create your own personal vision statement, perhaps you're done. Maybe you need more reflection time. It's all good. I would love to hear from you. Please share with me what you've created. Put it in the comments below. Send me an email, by all means, I would love to see what you have done by creating this new direction for you in your life. Now, I've also promised you some good reflection techniques. If you go to the link below, I have some mindfulness techniques that you can use at work and home that's gonna help ground you and allow you to stay centered, particularly in times of stress and challenges. So on that note, please share this with all the friends and family and people that you know. Subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, and I will talk to you next time. See you later. Bye.